Performance enhancing substances give certain athletes an unfair advantage and ruin the integrity of sports. However, two chemists at the Drug Control Center at King's College London are working to level the playing field. David Cohen co-founded the center in 1978 and has been one of the world's leading experts in sports drug detection ever since. His colleague, Li Ying Jiang, is a promising young researcher whose goal is to reduce the cost of anti-doping methods and develop quicker analytical methods for detection. Make no mistake, if you're cheating in sports, they will catch you. <whistles> Sport is generally considered to be a healthy activity governed by rules. If you agree to be a member of your sports club, you're also agreeing to follow its rules. Drug misuse is clearly unhealthy and definitely contravenes the rules of most sports. How is drug testing coordinated? Some years ago, the International Olympic Committee established the World Anti-Doping Agency, commonly known by its acronym as WADA. Their role is to coordinate anti-doping on the world stage with international sports federations and governments, both during the Olympic Games and in the intervening periods. There are more than 400 different doping agents on the WADA prohibited list, and the list is constantly expanding. Doping agents are classified into different groups based on their mode of action. These range from small molecules such as steroids and stimulants to medium and larger molecules, such as peptides and small proteins. We work from a molar mass of 44 to around 42,000 Dalton. Doping agents may also be present in a sample over a large range of concentrations, from as little as nanograms per mil to around 10 micrograms per mil. That is a range of more than 10,000 fold. This diversity presents big challenges for the analytical chemist to detect them all in one analytical method. So let's have a look at how dope testing works with my colleague Li Ying. Modern analytical instruments provide powerful tools to make the anti-doping test both super sensitive and super fast. We also want the methods to be cost effective. From this point of view, scientists still have a lot of room for further development. And that's what I found so exciting. How much does an anti-doping test cost? Let's have a look at some numbers. In 2012, WADA estimated the average cost for the laboratory doping test to be around 600 US dollars for each sample. As we use more and more sophisticated methodology, escalating cost becomes a great concern. Of course, the science is paramount, but one of my goals is to revisit current approaches and see whether the cost can be reduced. Furthermore, if we can reduce costs, there's an opportunity to test more samples. In 2012, according to WADA, only 270,000 samples for the whole world, excluding professional sports and NCAA, were tested, although it is commonly believed that more than five times this number of athletes are doping. In that same year, WADA records show that nearly 2% of those samples tested contained one or more banned substance. If we can lower the cost, more doping tests can be carried out, more cheats can be caught and doping-free athletes can be better protected. A divided sample system is used in sport. This means that when a sample is collected from an athlete, it is divided into sealed, coded A and B bottles. The laboratory will only open and analyze the A sample. If the A sample is found to contain a banned substance, the athlete is informed and they can ask for the sealed B sample to be opened and analyzed in their presence, together with any expert they wish to bring with them. Li Ying will now take you through the laboratory process. Consider a urine sample collected from an athlete delivered to our laboratory. From the portion of sample A taken from the original bottle, a small aliquot is prepared and screened by GCMS, that is gas chromatography coupled mass spectrometer. And a second aliquot is prepared differently and screened by LCMS that is liquid chromatography coupled mass spectrometer. 
These two screening methods were optimized in 2012 for the London Olympics. The GCMS screening method uses tandem mass spectrometer to screen samples in about 10 minutes for about 150 target compounds. These are mainly steroids that are more nonpolar chemicals. The LCMS screening method uses modern high-resolution mass spectrometer to screen samples in the same amount of time for about 250 compounds. These are mainly stimulates, beta blockers, and diuretics that are more polar compounds. Overall, each screening method takes about 8 hours to prepare a batch of samples and for running them on an automated analytical instrument, often overnight. The complex data evaluation is carried out by two independent scientists, and this can take up to a further eight hours to complete. The liquid chromatography coupled high resolution mass spectrometry screen is actually a so called non targeted approach, since we use full scan high resolution data. However, for speed of review, we use a targeted method of data analysis that looks for known compounds. Nevertheless, the data files enable us to look retrospectively for novel compounds that WADA had not previously considered. Several other analytical platforms are used to detect different doping agents, especially those of bigger molecular weight. For instance, an immunoassay test is used for detecting human chorionic gonadotropin, HCG. This is a hormone normally produced by a pregnant female. In males, it has the effect of maintaining the normal testosterone level in the body so that the misuse of anabolic steroids can be masked. The multiple analytical platforms used for detecting different groups of doping agents and the labor-intensive sample preparations used in different platforms push up the cost. Add to that the expense of a modern powerful mass spectrometer, usually more than half a million dollars per instrument. And you can see why it is so important for us to find a unified analytical platform and simplified sample preparation methods to increase throughput and reduce cost. Automated processes are used wherever possible, thereby allowing staff more time to deal with more complex issues. As an example, sample preparation may sometimes be simplified by diluting the sample with LC solvent, together with heavily labeled internal standards, and injecting directly into the LC MS. We are working hard to refine the existing analytical platforms we are also required quite often urgently to develop new testing methods for novel substances. For instance, at the beginning of 2016, the Russian world number one tennis player, Maria Sharapova, admitted to failing a routine drug test because meldonium was found in a urine sample she provided. Our colleagues in Cologne, Germany, developed two approaches for detecting meldonium that we have further modified. Meldonium is much more polar than most of the molecules we have to analyze. So how do we deal with the analysis? First, we needed to evaluate a suitable LC column out of a huge range commercially available. We were able to develop and validate the Meldonium method within just a couple of days using one of our older and less sensitive LC triple mass spectrometers in MRM mode. For those of you not familiar with the term, MRM stands for Multiple Reaction Monitoring. In this technique, we select a precursor ion, in this case at mass to charge ratio 147, which is a permanently charged molecular ion of meldonium fragment it in a collision cell of the mass spectrometer and detect fragment ions at mass to charge ratio 58 and 59. Using the known retention time and the MRM transitions gives us a reliable and sensitive detection method. 
We have also been researching the use of HRMS, making use of the high resolution to be certain that we have separated the analyte from matrix in mass terms rather than in time separation as occurs with LC to avoid any interference. What comes next? In order to improve our methods further, we are investigating a number of different approaches in relation to chromatography. The use of helic, that is hydrophilic interaction liquid chromatography, as well as reversed phase, will enable a more comprehensive analysis of a range of substances analyzed in a single run. Also, speeding up the chromatography or even having no chromatography and using the MS to separate different substances is another promising approach that I plan to explore. Anti-doping scientists have the analytical tools to develop further detection methods to help ensure the level playing field. The path to becoming an anti-doping scientist involves getting a good grounding in analytical science through the normal university system. Essentially, our aim is to level the playing field for all athletes, from amateur through to professional sports. Our goal is not to punish athletes, but to deter drug misuse and protect the integrity of sport. Thank you David and Li Ying for sharing your work and showing how chemistry can help protect the integrity of sports.